So, Carmen Rider Geats episode 21. There's a lot I've got to say about this episode in this review, recap, podcast, whatever you want to call it, because this episode was quite the interesting one, because last week we found out that Say was the disaster, the devastator, the griefer, you could say, but in this episode... It was played up that she was the one who was the disaster, or the devastator, whatever you want to call it, depending on your subs. But then we find out that that was a fake out, and it was Neon the whole time. So a lot of people who were banking on Neon being the freaking disaster, you guys were right, and props to you. Give yourself a round of applause and a pat on the back, because you guys figured it out. I don't know if you guys thought this would be a fake out leading into this, but... You guys were right, so to everyone who wanted Neon to be the uh, disaster, props to you guys. But this episode, we also got a bit of plot, we also got to see a brand new writer suit, and not only that, things are shaping up to be very interesting in Kamen Rider Geeks while being 21 episodes into the show. So without any further ado, let's take it from the top, and I'm going to go over my notes, because I actually took notes for this episode, and I'm glad I did, because like I said, we got a couple of bombshells, and I'd hate to miss them, and people get mad at me in the comments, but it is what it is. Um, so let's talk about Kamen Rider Geeks, episode 21. So this episode starts off with Buffer cutting his promo on all the other players and the audience himself because he's back in the game and he doesn't care what the audience thinks of himself because he's got his own sponsor and like he says he's here to fuck shit up which you gotta admire Buffer for being Buffer but we also get this sort of plot thing revealed in this episode that's probably going to be the driving force in the show later down the line with some things that were mentioned in this episode. So we have the villains and they reveal what their motive is and what they're doing and they're looking for the goddess of creation so they can reshape or recreate the world because apparently it's in the hands of the uh, Desire Pre, so they want to defeat all the writers and get it back from them, so that way they can do whatever they want with the goddess. Not only that, Daichi is back and he's working with the Jamato, which I, I missed from watching the episode preview and seeing the images, so I totally missed that Daichi would be back. I mean, he did say he'd be back and he's working with the bad guys now, so he's become that arsehole that you can root against, which Daichi is the bad guy or the writer you love to hate because the dude is such an arsehole. But the whole mission for this episode is the defusing the bombs game, but they've got to defuse the bombs for Say's family. And like I said, with last week's episode, you learned Say's backstory, but then you also learned that she might be the uh, disaster, but that was a fake out because you find out that it's Neon in the end, which I'll get to in a bit. Um... But yeah, Buffer's doing his own thing. You get this cool scene with Geats and Tycoon where they save a bunch of people from the Jamato and Geats gets two freaking rewards. And when he throws it at one of the Jamato, he basically takes one out with the loot box and gives it to freaking uh, Tycoon as a gift. And I, that got a laugh out of me, that scene. Really cool action scene when they were fighting as well. I really enjoyed it. Uh, Buffer shows up and he starts beating the shit out of Lopo and kicks the crap out of her, and basically takes the zombie buckle from her, and grabs it back, because he needs that zombie buckle, he wants that zombie buckle, he can't be without it. Um, so, we also have this scene where you have Neon sort of taking the uh, attack from Buffer as well, uh, she saves uh, Lopo, that was a really nice scene, and it kind of ties into what we learn about our characters in the end, but after the intermission, you have this scene where Ace and the producer have a talk and the producer asks Ace if he's from this era. But Geats also says that, or teases that he might not be from this era as well because he's been winning these games for the longest time. But Geats does sort of hint at these gods and stuff like that being involved, who are sort of watching the game and sponsoring the game. So we kind of get that sort of wordplay with the teens. I know I'm probably uh, miswording it, but with like the conversation between the two, they sort of tease that something hierarchy is involved with these characters. Um, so 
We also have a scene where the Jamato are sort of uh, mimicking more humans as they're planting more. So no doubt about it, more deceased riders we've seen in the game are going to come back. And I'm wondering if Buffer's old friend is going to be one of those characters that gets revived in the end. Like Buffer did lose a friend back in the old game. So I'm wondering if he's going to see his old friend mimicked by the Jamato in the end. Also, you've got Daichi, and he sort of says why he's teaming up with the Jamato. Daichi's an arsehole, that's his motive. He wants to crush riders and stuff like that. So we have this scene where uh, they fight at the quarry, and it gets pretty intense with all the stuff going on, but that's when our heroes learn that Say is the disaster. She does this menacing laugh, saying, it was me all along, and steals the fever slot buckle from Tycoon and starts beating up our heroes and beating up Jamato and then Buffer shows up as well but Buffer basically gets involved with a fight with the executive producer who turns into Overgazer I believe the writer form is called which is basically glare with a white paint job and when this suit was revealed through scans it stirred up a little bit of controversy in the writer fandom online because it was basically the glare suit with a white paint job and everyone just thought oh they just used the glare suit for a couple of episodes and it's already getting reused into like another writer's suit but that doesn't seem to be the case because apparently you're going to see the other game master the wild douchebaggy one he's gonna turn into glare next week it seems like spoilers if you didn't watch the preview but it looks like we've got overgazer and we've got glare so i'm wondering if all the sponsors and all the hierarchies who have that sort of higher higher power higher position in the sort of uh broadcasting television sphere like the executive producer and the director and stuff like that they can all transform into writers as well because there's always this uh female companion that the, that the executive producer has so i'm wondering if she can turn into a writer as well and if she can that'd be really cool because that means we get more female writers in uh Carmen writer and female writer suits are usually pretty good when we see them um but basically buffer gets his shit wrecked uh by Overgazer and Overgazer is just sort of using Ultra Instinct and getting out of the way when he gets attacked and he gets dirt on him and he just steps to the side and wipes the dirt off his suit and then he just goes god mode on Buffer and blows the shit out of him but Buffer somehow survives with the help of the zombie buckle that we've kind of established a couple of um episodes ago like the zombie id call the zombie buckle is what is keeping i think no it's the zombie buckle is what is keeping him alive in the end so he somehow walks away from getting blasted um but in the end you do have say uh saving a family neon comes in the end saves the day but then in the end you have say getting four votes and you wonder saying oh say voted for herself that's kind of weird but then she sort of walks off backstage and neon follows her and that's when you get the reveal that neon was the uh disaster which in my notes i literally wrote down saying oh shit fake out neon's actually the disaster question mark explanation point uh but then we get this nice moment of neon and say having this nice talk together which was really nice but then you have this moment where uh neon is talking to the game master and they sort of have their conversation and neon is determined to win so neon turning slightly heel is interesting like i don't see her as an evil character but her motives are kind of weird like she wants to find true love and stuff like that but then she learns from uh say that her love from her family is like true love for her and that's what keeps her going because that's her motivation so Neon's quite the odd case and with only like the main trio survive like being left you've got Neon, Geats and Ace. I'm wondering how the show is going to turn out moving forward and where this whole disaster arc is going to go um, once Neon gets caught. Like is she is the character or the actress going to take a break from the show? Are they going to turn villainous as well and then we're just going to follow the main boys, uh, Geats and Tycoon? It's hard to freaking say right now because more writers can come in and join the game. But um, this Neon twist is... Although some would say it might be predictable and a lot of people saw it coming, I am curious to see where they're going to go with it and how this arc is going to wrap up.
So anyway, guys, that was Carbon Rider Geats episode 21. We learned some interesting revelations in these episodes, and I'm curious to see where the show is going to go moving forward with our characters and stuff like that, because what we learned was quite the interesting reveal. And like I mentioned earlier on in the review, I'm curious to see where this arc is going to go and where the show is going to go, because we're almost at the halfway point for the show. And things just keep getting crazier and crazier. So I wonder what the middle arc is going to be for this show. Because I am worried what the middle arc is going to be. If that's going to like drag the show out or not. You never know. Um, but anyway guys. What did you think of episode 21? If I missed anything. Feel free to tell me in the comment section down below. Uh, I'm fine with you guys correcting me with what I missed. Or what I interpreted wrong. But anyway guys. If you enjoyed this video. Hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. And I'll see you guys later. Peace out. Take care. Bye.